Here we're going to be looking at light and its impact on photosynthesis in a brief manner. However, if you ever look at a leaf really close and kind of add some light to it, you can see the intense network that's occurring in that leaf. A lot of exchanges going through, a lot of water can be moved through, nutrients are being produced and shuffled across, sugars are being transported. There's a lot going on in the leaf that you may not realize. Now those leaves contain plant pigments, and plants contain pigments that target specific wavelengths of light to absorb. This allows for multiple wavelengths to be utilized by the plant. So even though we typically associate a leaf being completely green, uh, there are other pigments that do exist. However, chlorophyll is the most dominant, can overshadow and allow us not to see these other pigments. However, in the case of New England, where uh, leaves will fall off the trees, its chlorophyll will be broken down and we can start to see different colorations develop as those pigments become more prominent. So they're always in the leaf, but because chlorophyll is so dominant, we don't get to see them. And this is kind of that example here. We can see the chlorophyll being pulled out of the leaf margins. We can see nice, brilliant oranges and reds and some yellows uh, being the next most dominant pigment. Now chlorophyll, while we're using this as a general term, there's actually chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. The reason why a plant has those is they absorb different wavelengths. So we can see both chlorophyll A and B are pretty poor at absorbing green wavelengths. It's kind of what makes plants green. We see that light being reflected. However, blue and red wavelengths are being absorbed. We'll notice chlorophyll B and A have this spike here in that blue wavelength, with chlorophyll B being a little bit more um, absorbent of those kind of upper 400 nanometer um, wavelengths. We see the contrast here with chlorophyll A being a little bit better to absorb those mid to upper 600 uh, nanometer wavelengths. Um, and this is what helps the plant utilize and capture more of the light that it's being exposed to. To help it even further along, not going to go into this in too much detail, but there's something called an antenna complex. And light energy is, abs is absorbed by this antenna pigment molecules. It's transferred ultimately to chlorophyll uh, A, reaching the center pigment to drive photosynthesis. So here's chlorophyll A. But we can notice this energy transfer. We might be familiar with uh, lycopene and tomatoes, that gives it kind of the red color. Here we see chlorophyll B absorbing at 650 nanometers. Here's chlorophyll B also absorbing at 450 nanometers. And uh, xanthocyanin is 480. We can see this is the way that the plant's able to capture a greater amount of the light energy and transfer that energy to chlorophyll A to then continue on with the photosynthetic process by utilizing as much energy as possible that it's being exposed to.